All right. So my first experience is we had recorded the Bible in 1991, 1993 for the Konkombas, a people in Ghana. And we began to see, what if we would just go to a village and we would say to the pastor, we will give you this proclaimer if you will do what Joshua, Josiah, Nehemiah, and Jesus did. If you will just gather all of the people and at least listen 30 minutes a week, followed by a time of conversation, discussion, not preaching, let people ask questions. You don't answer the question. You turn the question back to them. So if they say, why did Jesus curse the fig tree? You don't say, you don't explain. You just say, why do you think? And allow the people to engage the scripture. So I remember going in this first village. We come into the village. We tell the people, listen, we brought you the word of God in Concomba. Would you like to listen? And they say, ah, no. Jesus doesn't speak our language. He only speaks English. We say, no, no, no. He speaks Concomba. No, he doesn't. I, so I take the black box out. I push the button. And out of it comes Concomba. And everybody goes, ah, he speaks Concomba. They start laughing. They start crying. They grab a gong gong. Gather the people. So a gong gong is a piece of metal. They go through the whole village. Bam, 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 bam. They bring everybody. Nobody is missing. 300 people under the trees. You come out. Everybody's waiting. You push the button. All sound in the village is just gone. Nobody moves for 45 minutes. And when you look into their eyes, you realize they are not with you. They have entered the story, and they are actually walking with Jesus. And so they are not with you. They are, you're looking at them, you're saying they're not there. Forty-five minutes later, you stop the button, and you watch them go, because they're coming out of the story. They were walking with Jesus. They said, ah, he speaks Kongomba. He can address us directly. We don't need a translator to talk to God. He is from among us. The old man say, we want you to rewind. The, we want to hear the genealogy again. And they listen to the genealogy three and four times, talking about it for hours. Years later, so many changes. Because see, when you hear the story of Josiah, remember that when he first heard the word of God, he ripped his clothes. Why? Because in the temple of God, it says he had a sheer of poles and bells. It would be like having a big Buddha right in the middle of your church. He had shelters, it said, for male prostitutes and women prostitutes that wove to Asherah. If I came into your church and your pastor said he loved God, but there was a Buddha here and a, a sun god here, and over here were shelters with male prostitutes that I could have sex with, and over here were the female prostitutes, I would not believe he loved God. But it says Josiah loved God. But he didn't know the word of God. And around the world, this is what's true in all of the churches among the poor. We come, we share the gospel of Jesus Christ, we hand them a Bible they can't read, and we say, hallelujah, you're a Christian, you're going to heaven. And then they beat their wives, they get drunk, they worship other gods, and they don't understand that it's wrong. So in these areas, as we brought the word of God, total transformation was happening. Families were restored, villages come to faith, and I was so amazed. So I would begin to ask, what story or stories caused you to come to faith? And a third of the time, they would say, it was the genealogy. When we heard the genealogy of Jesus Christ, this was when we accepted Christ. And I went, what? One people group, the Kabye people in Togo, West Africa, they told me that the genealogy was so powerful that they created a song out of it. And to evangelize, they would go to a village and they would simply sing the genealogy. And when they were done, then they would invite people to come to Christ. So you know that part of the Bible that you're like, okay, just skip over that. <laughs> Why did you start it with a list of names? For over half the world, that's the most important part of the Bible. In fact, about two years ago, I was in San Francisco area speaking to some business people, American business guys. And when I was sharing, I shared a little bit of genealogy just like I did with you. A white business man came up to me afterward very mad. And about the whole idea of genealogy. He was just angry that I would try to deceive people that the genealogy was important. Well, right behind him was a black African from Zimbabwe, businessman. He goes, oh, no, no. He defends me. He says, the genealogy is my favorite part of the Bible. And the white guy looked at him like he had two heads. He was like, what? He goes, no, no, no. You have to understand our culture. In our culture, it doesn't matter how wealthy you are. It doesn't matter what school you went to. 
The only right you have to speak or authority to speak depends on who your daddy's, 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 daddy's was. And so before anybody of importance will speak, somebody has to stand and tell the genealogy of that person. And if the genealogy is wrong, nobody will believe them or listen to them. So he said, I come from a very important tribe. I come from a chieftain family. And I myself am the firstborn of my father, who's the firstborn of his father, who's the firstborn of his father. So whenever there's a tribal event, the women of our tribe will teach, our, my, the aunties of, the, of my family will teach all of the women our genealogy. So when we come, they will come dancing out to meet us. And they will sing our genealogy, Enoch, son of Zechariah, son of Enoch, to 14 generations or 12 generations. So when we come, everybody knows somebody of importance has met. Now remember, we are recording the Bible for the poorest of the poor, for the Ebons, for others. So when we bring it into the village, they believe God has forgotten them. He does not speak their language. And so when you push the button and out of the black box, it comes in their language. And the first thing it says is, this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Immediately everybody's, who is this? Somebody of importance is being introduced because the genealogy is being given. And then it says, Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jake, what? Abraham. Everybody, Muslim, Christian, everybody knows Abraham because of Islam and Christianity. Everybody leans forward. It goes 14 generations to David. By this time, everybody is quiet. Then it goes 14 generations from David to the Babylonian exile. Now the quiet is palpable. Then it goes 14 generations from there to Jesus. By that time, nobody moves, nobody twitches, because nobody in the history of their tribe has ever heard from somebody as important as this. And then a virgin gives birth to a child. What? All of the two-year-olds in the village killed. John the Baptist comes screaming from the wilderness, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And they know they were in sin, and they immediately are pushed back. Jesus, driven to the wilderness by the Holy Spirit, comes out, begins to heal and deliver. And then he stands on the mountain to preach. Now he's preaching to the poorest of the poor. Illiterate people that live on $2 a day. And when they hear it from the black box, these are the same people poor. And as they listen, they lean forward. And what does he say? Blessed are the poor. And they go, no! Blessed are the wealthy. No. And he goes, blessed are the meek. No. Blessed are the powerful. Blessed are those who mourn. No, no, no. Blessed are those who rejoice. Blessed are the merciful. No. Blessed are those who don't have to show mercy. Turn the other cheek. Love your enemies. Pray for those who despise. By the time Jesus is done with the Sermon on the Mount, he has completely destroyed their worldview. He's destroyed everything they believe. And many want to reject him, but they have a problem because he has the greatest genealogy of anybody they have ever heard, and his right to speak is absolute. The Word of God is perfect, and when it starts with the genealogy, it starts for a reason. What I love, though, about oral people is they enter the story. You and I have become too educated. We read the Bible as if it's just a science book. They cannot. In India, we have what we call Bible women. It started first with a woman who came to faith. Her, his, her sister, her mom came to faith. Because in India, when they get a proclaimer, they run a bunch of wires out to the outside of the church. And they broadcast it for the whole village to hear. And I often say, wow, these are Hindus, right? And Muslims. I said, aren't they going to? kill you? They go, no, 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 no. If we don't broadcast in the morning, the people will come, Pastor, how come this morning I was having my tea, no word of God, how come? <laughs> and so they have to hear the word of God. So I'm like, wow. So when I was there, I found out there was this woman who came to faith in Christ, and so she came to the pastor. She's illiterate. She had heard the word of God, so she said, Pastor, give me. I want to go use for evangelism. But this pastor plays it every morning, every night for the village. He has seven listening groups. The church has grown from 25 to 85 people. He's got all these evangelists, these groups. It's his most precious prize. He says, no, 
You can't have it. Wh who has it? Well, we work with Bible Society. We never have our own staff. Here we work through full gospel businessmen and the Bible Society. So we never have our own staff. So they said, oh, it's the, the, the Bible Society team, Faith Comes by Hearing team. So she goes to them and says, listen, can I have an audio Bible? And they say, no. I mean, there's 200,000 churches in India. We have only reached 100,000. And so we only give one per church. And so it's a woman. And so she, the woman comes and says, can I have, what do you say? No. Have you ever told a woman no? <laughs> that God has said yes. Has it worked well for you? It didn't work well for my team. So she kept coming back and she figured out the program. 30 minutes of listening followed by 30 minutes of discussion. And so she said, if I start a listening group, can I have one? No. If I start three listening groups, can I have one? No. If I start five listening groups, can I have one? No. Day after day, she comes back. They finally say, okay, okay, okay. Take it, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> ha! Yeah, have you ever had a woman not tell anybody something? No. So when I got there, there was 35 women that had received audio Bibles. And so I, my team thought I was going to fire them. I said, no, 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 I like this. So what are they doing? So what these women did is they would take the audio Bible and they would go hut by hut by hut, playing the Word of God for the women when the men had gone to work. And what they were looking for is the woman of peace. You know how the Bible says when you enter a strange town, you're supposed to find the man of peace? No, no, no. They look for the woman of peace. So this is a Hindu or a Muslim who hears the Word of God and says, ah, these words touch me. I want to hear more. So they would just lay down a mat, stick, tie a piece of cloth between some of the huts, and they would begin to play it. Now you can see how loudly it plays, right? So they would start with three or four women. Pretty soon they would have 25, 35 women, 11, 12 children listening. So I said to the first woman, I want to go see. How many listening groups do you have? 34. What? She has 10 workers. So they start from morning, they go to night. So I sit in a listening group. I'm the only one with a chair. Everybody's on the mats. And as I look, they've been listening for one year. And so a question comes in my heart, doubt. Why are they listening? Is it because they're illiterate? Is it because all of the stories? What has happened? So when they're all done, I say, okay, so what? What's happened? And the first woman looks at me and she said, listen, I was a Hindu and I was, list I was going blind. She said, the pain in my eyes was so bad that I was psychotic because I couldn't sleep. I went to the doctor and the doctor said that if you do not have an operation in one year's time, you'll be blind. And she said, I had no money. So she pointed to the woman of peace and said, this woman has invited me to the listening. And the first time I listened, I began to believe that Jesus was the real God. And as she listened, she said, one day, Jesus walked by a blind man. Now, remember what I said that they enter the story? And so she began to tell me what happened. She said, as the blind man began to cry out, Jesus, son of God, have mercy on me. She in her heart began to cry out. Because she said, what happened is the first time she came to the listening group, the pain in her eyes went away. But when she left the listening group, the pain would come back. Every time she would come, the pain would leave. And so she knew that Jesus Christ was doing this. So when the blind man walked by, she cried out in her heart with the blind man, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. But she said, the people told me to be quiet. But then the blind man cried louder, Jesus! Son of God, have mercy on me. And she began to cry out with him. And she said, then Jesus called me and said, what do you want? And she said, I want to be healed. He said, do you believe that you can do this? That I can do this? And she said, yes, Lord. Then he said, according to your faith, be healed. And in that moment, she had a blinding pain in her eyes. Her eyes flooded with tears and she was healed. 